G'day guys, I'm Paul from Polyman Astro and welcome to a new video in the Pix Insight for Beginners series. You'll notice this looks a little bit different than the previous videos and it'll look a little bit different to the final video as well. And that's because this is an updated video. Color calibration has changed in Pix Insight recently, so it's important that I produce an updated video to give you more accurate up-to-date information. In this video, I'm going to show you spectrographic photo color calibration tool. It's, it's new inside Pix Insight and I'm going to explain to you why it's important. I'll also show you briefly how to set it up and how to deal with any issues with plate solving because this new process does use plate solving. And then finally, I'll use it on uh, the image we've been working on to show you how powerful it is. So this is where we're at at the moment. We have our image. I've used the screen transfer function so that we can actually see what the image looks like. I've done ABE to kind of get rid of the light pollution gradient. Uh, and, it, and then I've done a slight dynamic crop. So it looks pretty good. It looks ready to stretch, but we can do better. The reality is our camera sensors don't collect photons 100% efficiently. We can represent this with what's called quantum efficiency, and you'll see it written all over camera manufacturers' websites. What they don't tend to mention is it varies depending on the wavelength of light. So your camera tends to be more sensitive at the green end of the spectrum compared to the red end of the spectrum. What this all means is that although the colors look pretty good in this image, they're not entirely accurate. Good news is PixInsight has a new tool called Spectrographic Photo Color Calibration, or SPCC for short. It uses a very powerful database called the Gaia database. We won't go into the deep end of, of what that is, but suffice it to say, it's a very accurate spectrographic record of about 300,000 stars or more in the night sky. And it can use that information along with the QE curve for your specific camera, or what's called the ideal QE curve, which gives us how sensitive your camera is to different ways lengths of light and it also takes into account the, the specific filters that you have as well. Putting all that together it can adjust your image to be much more color accurate. Once set up it's very easy to use uh, and, and takes very little time. So let's set up PixInsight so that SPCC will work and hopefully work flawlessly for you. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you're using the most up-to-date version of PixInsight and you can do that by going to resources about PixInsight. And as long as yours says 1.8.91 Ripley, then you're up to date. And you can confirm that you actually have SPCC by going to process all processes. And here it is, spectra photometric color calibration. If you don't have it showing up, then perhaps you need to update your system by going to resources, updates, check for updates. And hopefully it'll show up when you finish that and, and restart PixInsight. If you don't have the most recent version of PixInsight though, you've got no choice but to go to the website. And we're gonna to need to go there anyway to get a few files. So let's do that. Oops, misspelled it, but that's all right, it'll find it. Here we go. So we need to go to Downloads Software Distribution and you're gonna to need to log in here and you should see a page like this. So if you're not up to date for PixInsight, here are the files down here, 1.8.91. For your appropriate platform, you need to download that and install it, set it up. If you are up to date, you're still gonna need some files from here anyway. And the two things we're gonna need are the Gaia DR3 SP and the Gaia DR3. The SP stands for spectrophotometric, uh, and there's a choice of small set or complete set. Uh, I've got a small refractor, so the small set's fine for me. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure most people will be fine with small set. If you've got a particularly large aperture system or you're under amazing skies like in Chile, then maybe you need the complete set. But I'd start with a small set and see how you go. That's what SPCC is going to use, the DR3 SP files. The Gaia DR3 uh, for plate solving in general. Um, and for this, again, because I've got a small system, um, I was looking at the magnitudes here and thought, I'm going to be fine down to about number five here, about magnitude 19, surely is gonna be fine in my skies. And so far it's been working flawlessly. So you need to download, um, so for Gaia DR3, you need to download say the first five here or so, depending on your system, um, exactly what magnitude, limiting magnitude your system has. And then the Gaia SP, DR3 SP files. And again, I chose the small set and it worked fine for me and there's four of them there. I saved them on my hard drive under my D drive, uh, PixInsight, Gaia, 
And then I've got a folder that says DR3SP and Gaia DR3, and you'll see that shortly. So once we've downloaded those, we can get, go back to PixInsight, assuming uh, your system's up to date and ready to go. And what we need to do is go to not SPCC, we need to go to Gaia. So process all processes Gaia. This is just a once off. Once you're done, you're done. So you're going to open up Gaia, click on the wrench icon here. Um, now I've already set this up, so yours are going to be all blank. There's a few different options here. And again, the only two we need are these last two, the DR3 and the DR3SP. So under DR3, you can see I went to, uh, I selected uh, my appropriate folder, which is the D drive, uh, PixInsight, Gaia, DR3, and I've got those five um, files that I can select and open. And then I went to DR3SP, and again, I chose that folder, the DR3SP folder, and I selected those four files and opened them. And once that's done, Gaia's set up. You, you, you probably won't use Gaia again. SPCC can be found under process, all processes, down here, it's alphabetical, spectrophotometric color calibration. Okay, now it looks complicated, but it's not too bad. This section up the top here is where we can adjust for our camera's quantum efficiency. I, I just leave it at the ideal QE curve, but if you know what your sensor is, then you can choose from these sensors, and I assume that that will grow uh, with time. You can also choose your different filters. So for instance here, I know that I'm using a ZWO R filter, a ZWO G filter, and a ZWO B filter. But as you can see, there's other options as well, depending on whether you have a DSLR um, or um, some of these other filters. And with time, uh, these will get added to as well, okay? So I've set up my ideal QE curve. I've got my RGB here, uh, and I'm just gonna leave the white reference as average spiral galaxy. Uh, I don't need to touch anything else. Uh, I'm not doing narrow band, so I'm not gonna touch that today. Uh, the only other thing that we need to do is also do some background neutralization as well, because this tool will do that for us now as well. So we need to choose an area of proper background. So I might go up here in this top corner here and zoom in a little bit and choose a region that doesn't have any stars or nebulosity in it. I just want pure background, so I can see there's still some red nebulosity there that I want to avoid. Uh, and then I just choose a little preview here. So I'll choose a section here that doesn't have stars in it. And that's going to be my preview. Uh, and I can choose that in this region of interest here. If I tick on that, then I can go from preview and it'll give me a list of previews. And since this is the only image open and the only preview, there's only one choice here. I've now set everything up. I've got, I've chosen my appropriate Gaia database here and I've set Gaia up. So I can just press apply here and it'll run, except it won't run. You can see here, this image has no astrometric solution. And that's because I haven't actually run weighted batch pre-processing on this. So it hasn't actually plate solved my image. So if you use weighted batch pre-processing, that will run perfectly fine. And you'll see an example of it working perfectly fine in a moment. But if you use another piece of software like DSS, uh, Deep Sky Stacker or anything else to, to um, stack your images, then you won't have a valid astrometric solution here. How do you deal with that? Well, the good news is we've set up Gaia already. So I can go under script here, image analysis, image solver. There is a built-in plate solver in PixInsight. And again, because we've set up Gaia, this is going to work nicely. So I'll open this up. And what I need to do is I need to go through, it looks complicated again. I just need to click on the search button here. And this is the Lagoon Nebula. So I'm gonna choose the Lagoon Nebula. So it now has the right ascension and declination. I need to get the date and time pretty accurate. Now I know that's pretty accurate to, to when I took this image. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be reasonably accurate. And then you only need two more pieces of information. You need either your focal length, which I'm sure you know for your telescope, or your, uh, pixel resolution, which I happen to know quite accurately because I've done plate solving in the past. And you also need to know the pixel size of your camera. And for the 183 sensor I have, it's 2.4. So I've got all that information. Focal length is probably the easiest one for you to put in and the pixel size, and then it'll adjust the resolution for you. So you've got it the next time. And then the only other thing we need to choose is 
how do we want to actually do the plate solving? And since we've gone to the effort of choosing the, the Gaia files, I, I would go to local, make sure you choose uh, the, the latest Gaia, the DR3. Everything's set up. And the good thing is this script will remember things for the future now. So this, once you've done it once, this resolution is always going to be there. This pixel size is always going to be there and it's going to be set for local. So you only have to do this the once. The only thing you'll need to adjust is what your target is. And you, you probably know the common name for that. So you can just search for it. That's really quite nice. Um, and because I, if I press OK here, it'll happen quite quickly because it's local. It's on my hard drive. So there you go. Now it's done. That took forever. Um, I've only ever used this really on my narrowband images. Um, so maybe with all the stars in this particularly busy region, it took forever to to go through and um, iterate a solution. But nevertheless, you could just go get a coffee or something if you wanted to. Uh, it's done. It solved the image. So now I can use SPCC. I just press that square button again and away it'll go. And it is done. So you can see here um, the statistics if you'd like to look at it, but the idea is you want it to look fairly linear um, and it's done. Uh, you'll notice the background looks terrible at the moment, but that's because I need to reapply the STF. Whenever you do something, you need to reapply the STF to get the best out of it. Um, and we should end up now with quite a nice looking image. So let's have a quick look at what SPCC actually did. So I'll make a, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go back a step before SPCC. I'll duplicate it. Now you don't have to do this, of course. This is just so that we can see what it's actually done and whether it's worth it for you. Uh, so this is prior to SPCC here. This is what the image looked like. And this is with SPCC. So I can straight away see that the lagoon now looks a lot more pink throughout. Uh, and, and the I can see the same thing for uh, the Trifford portion here. So the, the HA regions definitely look a lot deeper pink than they did before. And in fact, I can see a lot more red nebulosity throughout the Milky Way here than I can in the original image. Uh, the blue looks a lot bluer and a lot less green than it does here. And I can see overall the stars look more yellow uh, the, the golden stars look more yellow, uh, yellow golden than they do here. And these blue stars have a green tint to them that they don't here. So is it worth it? I think so, absolutely. All right, so using SPCC does make a difference. Uh, I think it looks fantastic and it's a great new tool in PixInsight. And hopefully it's going to take your images to another level. Thanks for watching.